Hey friends, thank you for returning for another episode of Elevate with Erica. So I've got some new subscribers to my YouTube channel where video of this is streamed and also new listeners to my podcast have so graciously been sharing my episodes on your social media the past two weeks. And to all of you, just like, thank you so, so much. It means so much to the growth of this show when you guys help me get the word out. That is how we get the word out. So I love that you connect with it so much that you want to tell others about it. And if you haven't already subscribed here on YouTube or whatever podcast platform that um, you're tuning in on today, please take the time to do so. um, If you're, if you're picking up what I'm putting down and extra hugs, if you take the time to leave a quick review, thank you. Thank you. Uh, So I'm coming off of a zoom meeting that I did last night with another team in the body network team F3. If you can see me on YouTube, I just blew y'all some kisses. You guys are like family to me now, which means you're stuck with me. So there you have it. But in that conversation though, I had the opportunity to share my story and I appreciate those opportunities because the more you give a voice to your story, the more confident you become in sharing more and more of it each time. So more details and just more ways for people to see themselves in you and create connections by airing out who you are and what has made you who you are. It's just, it's so important, I think, for us to give a voice to and own every part of our story, not just for ourselves and our own acceptance of ourselves, but also for each other. Like it doesn't help anyone to put up this perfect image of who you are. You know, we all see the perfectly curated Instagram feeds, but it's not real, you know? And I'm more drawn to people who are open and honest with their messy. Humans are complex people, and I'd rather show my ups and downs and connect with someone who accepts all of me than only show the highs and connect with people who only love me at that level, because that level can be exhausting, right? Like we need the highs, we need the lows, we need it all. So when I got the opportunity to share how I've overcome adversity shared more of my background, what got me into working out consistently and into wellness coaching, I was excited to just air it all out. Let's put it out there. You know, the people who hear your story or hear something you're going through today and judge you for it or for your reaction to something, those people are only judging you because they haven't accepted that part of themselves. They haven't owned their own story. Life experiences, ups and downs, they haven't owned all that. They are the brave faces, right? That's what we call them. And I think part of society has taken that as a symbol of strength. You know, the people who don't cry, stay strong all the time, a brave face in front of others, shaming the other parts of themselves in privacy. And I don't want to be in any room where I'm not accepted for all of everything that I am. I've tried to be perfect Erica before, and it was the most miserable years. I am sorry to say that it was years of my life. I was just waiting for other people to validate me, to tell me I was cool and fun. And I wanted everyone to want to be my best friend. But what happened during that time is I literally shut down parts of myself that I didn't think were worthy of acceptance. I just thought if I acted a certain way, then my spouse at that time would love me more. If I portrayed myself a certain way at work, then people would see past the fact that I'm a female. See past my looks. If I acted a certain way in social settings, women would be more willing to be my friend. But then in trying to be and do all of those things, I totally lost who I was. I really just was living for others. And I think this is something that women often do as well. We forget who we are before we were moms. And we think we are supposed to start acting, dressing and behaving a certain way because we are moms, but we are so much more than that title. Being a mom is amazing, but you were already amazing. I think we were our most amazing selves before we are aware of other people other people's opinions that people, other people even formed opinions about us, right? 
Don't you love the carefree personality of a child when they are just being totally themselves in a public setting, kids on a dance floor, right? So much joy. I love seeing kids at a wedding on the dance floor. That was us before we realized people judged parts of us that they weren't comfortable with. Parts of us they weren't accepting within their selves. So then reflecting that self-hate onto us. Now, look, I'm not saying you need friends that accept all the parts of you, that love all the parts of you, maybe I should say. Like, if you're an asshole, you know, you should work on that. But maybe find friends that know you can be a bit of a jerk. Maybe you don't always think before you speak and you're rude sometimes. But find friends that accept that you're not perfect, call you out on it even, and make you want to work on those things. Friends that make you want to level up, be your best version of yourself, not play small. I saw outside validation for so long and I ended up almost 30 years old, out of touch with any true friends I had in high school in a 10 year relationship turned marriage with a man who didn't accept all the parts of me and unaware of who the hell I even was anymore. And I was fucking miserable and lonely. It is so lonely when you don't have people you can be all of yourself around because you at your high needs love, but you at your low needs it more, right? So if you don't have those people you can turn to when you're feeling down, who do you turn to? I can tell you who you turn to because I did it. You turn to the mirror, that's who. And you tell yourself, Something is wrong with you. Get it together. Stop being this part of you. Hide it. No one loves this you. This is why you have no friends. When I left that marriage and hit my bottom of being back in my parents' house with my boys in tow and just little belongings, having signed over my home to my ex and walking away with every dollar of debt that we had accumulated to furnish and care for that home and start a life. When I hit that bottom where alcohol was the only thing I looked forward to every day, I realized that being perfect Erica didn't quite pay off because it felt like I had no one in that moment because the people I had attracted to my life didn't want that Erica. They didn't know rock bottom Erica. They only knew the brave face. That low is when I realized I had to stop looking for validation outside and start loving and accepting every single part of who I was. And you know what's so great about that? When you are totally honest with yourself about who you are, like you're not trying to hide any parts of yourself, but you're willing to look in the mirror at you and just cry for the sad parts of you. You get to own everything about you, the good and the bad. And with that ownership comes the ability ability to constructively begin to work on yourself. Heal yourself from life experiences that have created traumas that you need to shed light on because they're in there. And if you don't shed light on them, you don't get to work on them. They just sit in here and they haunt you when you're alone. People hiding parts of themselves, people putting on that brave face all of the time, people judging you for your ups and downs, they don't get that ability. The people that think they're perfect, they miss the opportunity to become their best self. What a shame, right? But we don't have to let them stop us from working on us, loving all of ourselves so that we can take that messy us out into the world and make real connections with others, inspire others with our ability to heal ourselves. If it's you, if you're the one hiding parts of yourself, ashamed of pieces of you, ashamed of maybe some life experiences you've had or that you, maybe you're currently going through or things you've done in the past that you're not proud of, I hope you save yourself. If you're in a situation in your life, be it a relationship or a job or something along those lines, and you're not proud of the fact that it's not working out the way you thought it would. I hope that you save yourself because definitely what I can tell you is that no one is coming to save you and you deserve better. When I was that person hiding parts of me, I was one of those judgy people. 
judging other people in their weak moments. Women tend to do this a lot in my experience. In the rooms I've been in, they can jump on the opportunity to knock someone else down to lift themselves up really quickly. And they come in packs, right? One woman says something nasty and then it's like a free for all. But you know what? No one's going to come save you. The moments when you're sad and you feel like it's stupid and you have no one to talk to and you tell yourself you're stupid for the way you're feeling, no one's going to make you stop feeling those things because you're denying who you are. So you can find the person you think is the best husband or the best friend, and they are just going to validate the parts of you, talk shit about other people. You are willing to show them only the good parts of you, and they're going to help you invalidate every other part there is. And it's a miserable way to be. It's lonely. You ever see those people, you know, or talk to people, stories behind people who've committed suicide and they're like, they seem to like so popular, right? Like such happy people. So many people love them and they just don't get it. It's because no one really knew them. People know what we show. What's good about social media is that it's given a lot of people an opportunity to be themselves, right? What's bad about social media is that people have taken that opportunity to further portray their life being perfect, like on another level though. Like in grade school, the popular girl could portray her life being perfect by just showing up in her new limited to outfit in Lisa Frank folder, showing my age here, right? <laughs> but now these popular people on social media have their filters and they're matching colors on their feeds and it looks like a Martha Stewart magazine in their house and they get to choose to only show the perfect moments of their kids not when they're being a total shit right <laughs> they're not putting the phone in their face when they're having an ugly cry or arguing with their spouse or struggling to get out of bed so then we see that right and we start to look at parts of ourselves like something is wrong with us why can't my family afford to travel why don't my kids listen to me? Why is my house always dirty? Why do me and my husband argue more than anyone else's? Why is it only hard for me to get out of bed today? Something is wrong with me. Something is wrong with me. Man, I've heard people say that you shouldn't air your dirty laundry on social media. Don't let anyone know you and your spouse are arguing, right? Like don't invite anyone else's opinion into your marriage. I love y'all who have said it because I know it's some of my friends, but I don't agree. Stop with the image of perfection. If someone else comes into your marriage because you went on social media and said you and your husband just had an argument, then there was more wrong with your marriage to begin with. Some of my husband's family sees my stories as well, but you know what? I'm not hiding when he gets on my damn nerves. I know it works both ways. I know we're not the only couple who argues. I think it's healthy. I know I get on his nerves too, because I'm stubborn AF. And I am so tired of trying to be perfect so that someone else outside of my marriage can think I have the perfect marriage. I did that already. Got married, got divorced. When I left my first husband, so many people were shocked because I didn't let anyone on to there being problems for so long. It didn't serve me. It meant I was alone in those problems and I had no one to talk to. And it didn't serve anyone else either because I've been that person in the shitty spot in life, right? Think back, moved in with my parents, two kids, nothing but debt. I've been in that shitty spot in my life and I've been watching other people's social media and thinking, damn, I really screwed up. Everyone else's life is perfect. What is wrong with me? By the way, the point in this is not to tell you to air your dirty laundry on social media. I'm not saying that you have to do that. I hope you guys get that my point here is just trying to be perfect for outside validation is only you invalidating you. It's you rejecting a part of you. And you won't build genuine connections that way. The moment you hit a low, I've been there. The moment you hit a low, 
those connections you thought you had, they won't even know what to do with you. They won't even recognize you. They will back away until you are the you they know again. Until you put that brave face back on. Until then, you're on your own. I highly recommend, by the way, I, I couldn't even get through this episode without mentioning something. I highly recommend reading The High Five Habit by Mel Robbins in your journey to accepting all the parts of you. Um, I'll link it in the show notes. It's a simple but really effective practice that brought me to tears some mornings when I first began it as I had to stop and look at myself in the mirror before I put my face on, before I did my hair, I had to look into my own eyes and give myself a high five. Tell myself that I loved me and that I was proud of me and that I could handle the day in front of me. It's very emotional at first when you really allow yourself to try something that seemed so silly at first, at least it did to me. I've said it in one of my episodes before, it's better to lose a relationship than to lose yourself denying who you are. When you start to validate all the parts of you, when you learn to self-validate and allow that to empower you because you realize you have all you need for acceptance within you today, right now, as you listen to me, you get really freaking brave and courageous in life. It changes you. All that energy you spent hiding things about yourself gets to go into being unapologetically you. And you're going to lose some friends in the process. And I won't sit here and say that they were never your friends to begin with. But what I will say is maybe show some, show some compassion. I'm not saying beg for their friendship, let them go. But what I mean by that is know that they are just uncomfortable seeing you embrace parts of you that they don't have the courage to do within themselves. But guess what else also happens? You meet the most amazing people. You meet people who see you, really connect with you, root for you, check in with you. People who have been waiting for someone they can see themselves in walk into their life. People who get to be inspired by you owning all of your ridiculousness. You will help people become their best self just by owning who you are too. Because when you own you, you get to work on you and you inspire others when you share that work. This is why I fell in love with Beachbody. Now becoming just body, by the way. New name, new kid in town. Because it's the first place where I began to really accept myself, all of myself. And I gave a voice to all those parts of myself and I made the best connections because of it. It's the most inclusive community I've ever been a part of. And the version of me that has birthed because of that is someone I'm so grateful that I got to meet. And now I get to share. When you don't own a part of yourself, a version of you will never get to exist. You're not doing anyone any favors by not being you. Like, you know, I think even for our kids, what's it doing for them to not let them see you upset? What's your brave face really doing for them? What's it teaching them? Do you think it's making them feel safe today? How are they going to feel as an adult when they start to feel something that they don't recognize that they've never seen before? Will they feel like something is wrong with them? Will they judge others for their emotions? It's something to think about. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap up this episode, but I want to leave you with this. If outside validation is your only source for nourishment, you will hunger for the rest of your life. Know that loving yourself, validating, and giving a voice to all the parts of you, owning where you can improve, owning your story, it will be the bravest thing you will ever do. And you'll get to inspire others because of that bravery. Other people will own, love, and validate their own story and rise because of you. That's a gift that costs zero dollars. 
that we can all give one another. Until next episode, friends. <laughs>